Well, you need to. Okay. All right, let me see. Kirk and You just couldn't <laughs> resist. Yeah, yeah, Miss Jackie couldn't resist, could you? Uh-uh. Hercules, Hercules. Yeah, there yeah. we go. <laughs> there we go, boy. This, this is going to be a fun, this is going to be a fun Bible study right now. I can tell we spied up. So, one more thing here. Let's get us ready to go. You're going to have to put a muzzle on Hercules. Hercules. I'm going to go in another room. Hercules want to praise God too. That's all. That's, that's, okay. All right. Now I'm set up for. All right. All right. Okay. Woo. Okay. All right. Hey, let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you uh, for this day. We thank you for all that we've been through. Lord God, it's been a couple of weeks since we've been together. And I thank you uh, just for the opportunity to be back. Thank you for traveling mercies. Thank you for your sustaining grace and mercy. Now, God, what we ask is that just like you did a couple of weeks ago, visit us, sit with us uh, wherever we happen to be right now, God. We need to hear from your spirit. We need to sense your presence. We need to feel your power. So God, we pray do everything that is taught this evening that you will fill it and that you will fill us. God, I pray that you will speak to me, speak to and through all of us, that we might build one another up so that we might live in such a way that you will be glorified and people will be blessed. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. amen. All right, everybody. So we are going to be in Romans 13. Um, and I just want to jump in. Um, Victoria. Oh, oh my gosh. Your name has changed all of a sudden. Oh. <laughs> I'm the artist formerly known as. That's right. The artist formerly <laughs> known as Victoria Fort. Would you mind reading for us Romans chapter 13, read 11 through 14. And do this, understanding the present time, the hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber. Because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in orgies, drunkenness, not in sexual immor immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, close your, clothe yourselves with Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. All right, great. Thank you very much. So we actually did 11 and 12, and then we kind of jumped down to 14 and talked about that. So somebody give me real quick. What did you hear in 11? Uh, uh, well, what did you hear in these verses? Y'all teach me for a second. What did you guys hear in 11 through uh, 14? Resist Put aside the deeds of darkness. <laughs> okay. All right. We're, we're going to spend some time on that one. Okay. Uh, Victoria? I think just overall yeah, resisting temptations. Okay. Okay. All right. I like it. I like it. Jackie? Well, we said that uh, Jesus is the light of the world and he expelled darkness. And we, and it talks about put on the armor. The armor is protection and walk is a lifestyle. Plan is our intent. And you ask, what are you, what are you wearing? And are you awake spiritually? All Take right. off deeds of darkness. Okay. All right, boy, 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 I almost sound like I taught something there. Okay, all right. Uh, Brother Halstead? It meant to me that you don't procrastinate with working out your salvation. Don't procrastinate with working out your salvation. I like mm. it. I like it. Any procrastinate? Any, anybody want to confess? Any confess procrastinators out there? Uh, you know, we'll, we'll put off till tomorrow what we could do today. And here's the problem with us, because we all know it as Christians. How many of us are guaranteed tomorrow? Nobody. Nobody. So why do we keep putting things off tomorrow until tomorrow? All right. And, and, and so again, th th this becomes a challenge to us in this life. And, and, and Ms. Jackie, you kind of mentioned it uh, yeah. already as you talk about that walk. And, and, and mm -hmm. anytime you, another interesting Bible study you, you want to do is look at, at when Paul talks about walking. 
and how we walk. Because when we think of walk, what does that imply? Walk implies something. Movement. Movement. <laughs> Movement. And because most of us, anybody, anybody on this line successful at walking backwards? No. <laughs> yeah, for most of us, most of us on this call, because I, I know y'all, walking backwards is not a success, is not a formula for success. Right. And so generally, because when we say, because we don't even use the word walking backwards, we talk about backpedaling, but it doesn't say back, but it says walk. And so not only are we talking about movement, we're talking about forward movement. And so mm -hmm. our lifestyle should be leading us forward. Okay. And so um, I actually, before I, anybody had anything else, because I, because, because I'm ready. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Can I um, oh, say hold on, Rosa. hold on one second, Rosa. Go, go ahead, Brother Cooper. Uh, this is right here in verse 11, and that knowing the time that uh, that now it is uh, time to awake uh, out of sleep. Uh, that was to me uh, the spirit, the spiritual man in me is has to be woken uh, and, and quit being lazy. We'll be late. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Rosa. I was going to ask, I was going to, when he read verse 11, uh, after the first little lady had read it, and I had a different version like he just read, and I was going to ask about, my thing is the high time, I mean, that knowing that the time is now, the high time is, the high time to awake out of your sleep. I'm thinking Maybe that's a way of him saying that we need to get our houses together because he's coming back sooner than we think. Absolutely. All, all, all of that, all of that is tied, tied into that because when he talks about our salvation, so, and this is not talking about most of us walk down an aisle, we pray to prayer, we got saved. He's not talking about that. He's talking about that time when Jesus comes back because our salvation has three, uh, simply three tenses. We were saved on that time that we gave our life to Christ. We were saved. We are in this process of life now. We are being saved. And when Jesus comes back, we will be saved. And so what he's talking about right here is nobody knows when he's coming back. But as all of us who've been watching the news and we've seen things exploding in Israel and all of that, please know there is nothing that needs to happen biblically for Jesus to come back. We're not waiting on anything. And so mm -hmm. when we say, all of us remember, remember being kids and your parents said, we'll go away and we'll be home. And I remember asking, what time will you be home? Why did I want to know what time they'd be home? Because you didn't know what time they were going to be home? Yeah, yeah. Do what you're doing. yeah. so you I could be done do doing whatever I was doing. <laughs> See, Brother Halstead and I, we was that same kind of kid. And, and, but guess what? They never told me when they were coming home. So that implied that I need to be ready. Okay. And, and, and anybody got a time, anybody got a calendar where Jesus says I'm coming back on the 23rd of April, 2000. Anybody got one of those? No. Nope. Here's oh. one of the things that I think is really cool. I really love it when people predict the day that Jesus <laughs> coming, comes back. You know why? Yeah. He because never comes you know back on that day that Jesus true. Did. <laughs> yeah, exactly what Jackie said. Because because I know if he picked if somebody picks a day, I know Jesus yes. isn't coming back on that day. Exactly. Because he said nobody knows the day or nobody the hour. Knows. So I love it. Oh yes, he's coming back on April 9th, 2024. It's like, okay, we good. We good, y'all. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about that. <laughs> All right. But the bottom line is we need to wake up. And again, this is not a physical wake up, this is a spiritual wake up. Because remember, we are not in a physical fight. And I actually I heard I, Sister Smith. Did you watch TD Jakes this morning or today? Oh uh, no, sir, not yet. Oh my goodness! We, oh, it was good. It was good. He was talking about the fact that he was talking about the three parts of who we are as people. That that we we live in a body. I mean, we are spirit. That we have a soul. That we live in the body. Oh, it, it was great. I was like, man, I, I need Sister Smith. Don't watch it, Sister Smith, because I might use it later. Okay, all no, right. Because I don't want you sitting there looking at me going, Pastor, you can do better than that. But I am the new pastor, so who knows? <laughs> that's right. So, so, I, here, I, so, so, so here, here's the thing. So we need to be spiritually awake 
And we talked about this a couple of weeks ago because most of us have had that, you, you had that dream where you thought you were awake and you were really asleep. Mm -hmm. And some of us, even though we live in an era where everybody's talking about stay woke and stay woke, yeah, physically woke, but we're spiritually asleep. And when we're spiritually asleep, we will get caught up in things that we shouldn't get caught up in, okay? And since Jesus is coming back, we need to wake up spiritually, all right? And, and so, um, let's see. We also talked about let us discard the deeds of darkness, and put on the armor of light. You know, as a as a superhero fan, the armor of light is really cool to me because then I think about Iron Man. Uh, those of you who don't know who Iron Man is, don't worry about it. But those who do, because Iron Man in the middle of his chest, anybody know what he has? Plug in. He has a big old light. He has a big yeah. old light. He has, he has a big old light right here in his chest. And matter of fact, of all the weapons he has, the most powerful weapon is the light in his chest. Oh my gosh, that'll preach. Because we all should have that same light because if his light, Jesus is the light, the light is in us, that makes us the light of the world. And, and so when we put on the armor of light, any, the, does anybody agree with me that the world is getting darker? Oh, yeah. The world is getting darker. I mean, if you don't agree, I'd love to hear why you don't believe that, but the world is getting darker. But when the night gets darker, what do we need? Right. Light. Light. That's all we need. We don't need to yell at the light. We don't need to cuss at the light. I mean, we don't need to yell at the dark. We don't need to cuss at the dark. Come on, dark, go away. Dark, dark, go away. Come back another day. Yeah. I don't need to do any of that. All I need to do is what? Pray. Flip a switch. Turn on the light. And, and, and if we are the light of the world, then, then, then there, even though the world is getting darker, there should be light out there for people to see. Go ahead, Brother Renee. I was just going to say is that light is much brighter in the darkness. You can always see even a little pinprick of light. Absolutely. So even in the darkness, there's always that hope. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I had a conversation with a friend of mine today. And uh, Miss Jackie, I keep quoting you uh, when we drove down in Monroe and we saw all the churches and we kept asking the question, what's wrong? Uh, for those of you who don't know, so in Shreveport, Cattle Parish, Sister Smith, I was at a meeting last week, and they told me in Cattle Parish, there are approximately 486 churches. Mm. 486 churches mm. for about 200,000 people. Hey. Wow. And by looking at Shreveport, would you know that there were 486 churches? Oh, God, no. And so that means it's not a problem with Shreveport. It's a problem with the church. Mm -hmm. Yep. So when I'm at home and I flip the switch and the light doesn't come on, it's not the fault of the darkness. <laughs> it's the fault of the light. And, and, and so as I look at the scripture, I see the challenge for us to be the light of the world. And that's where verse uh, 13 comes in when he says, uh, actually, let me see, uh, Victoria, you already read it. Um, Miss Washington, mm -hmm. can you read Romans 13, 13? Okay. 13, 13. Okay, this is a New King James Version. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in reverly and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. All right. So, so he talks about walking. We said walking was lifestyle, right? And so yeah. he's not going to he's going to tell us how to walk. And he uses a great word, a great word, depending on your version. He says, let us walk with. And I think, uh, Ms. Washington, what word did you have after uh, walk? With, walk? Uh, properly. You had properly. Anybody got anything else about how it describes how the walk is supposed to look? Honestly. 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 Okay. Anybody else? Decency. Indecency. Oh, oh, oh. Anybody else? 
Yeah. So what are the, so somebody tell me, so I've got properly, I've got honestly, I've got indecency, indecency, not indecency, in space decency. What, a, what, a, what kind of picture does that give you of, of what our lifestyle should be? All right. Wow. Um, our light should be on. I like that. See you. Well, go ahead. Preach, brother. I got all these wills here. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Anybody else? Your situation. When you reflects on your character. Okay. Character. Properly. Decency. Uh, what was it? Honestly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So our character should be reflected because when our yeah. character is reflected, actually, because anybody know, does the moon, yes or no, does the moon have light of its own? No. No, it does not. No. The moon reflects light the light of the light. Sun. sun. Okay, y'all want to preach this for me? So if the moon reflects the light of the S-U-N, the Christian should reflect the light of the S O N. Preach, y'all. <laughs> and so it's not our light. And so guess who? Guess who in all of the universe walks properly in decency and honestly? Christ. Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. Matter of fact, the book of Acts said he went about doing good. He walked in such a way, and that's the character that we should reflect. But instead of going deeper into that, instead of talking about the positive, and I appreciate this about how Paul does this, he talks about the negative. He said, uh, let us walk with decency as in the daytime. Um, Karen, I, last, time, last time we talked, I, I don't know, we, we talked about a yeah. song about what comes out at night. <laughs> Freaks, the Houdini song. Freaks. There you go, the Houdini song. Freaks come out at night. And in this, in, in this context, even though Houdini had not been thought of yet at this time, in this context, our sins are more prevalent at night. Why? Because we think we won't be seen. Amen. All right. And that's why when any, I know some, none of y'all know anything about this, but for those, those people that used to go to the club, if, if you remember the club, they, when you went to the club, were all the lights on in the club? No. no. I wonder why they, well, don't you want to see everybody dancing? No. You might want to, but we didn't want to <laughs> see who they was dancing with. Um, <laughs> and, and so darkness plays this, uh, this symbolic image of trying to hide what we're doing. Matter of fact, we like to say it, when it's done in the dark, We'll come to the light. We'll come to the light. Okay, Renee, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say it's interesting if you look at the things that he mentions, carousing and drunkenness, sexual immorality, debauchery, dissension, and jealousy. These are all sins that we do with other people, not like stealing an object. They're sins that we do with other people. I, I found that interesting. That is right, kind of interesting, isn't it? All right, because our lifestyle, because guess what? We are relational people and we were never called to walk this life alone. Now, the problem we have though, is when you get people together, what do you often get when you get a couple of people together? Chaos, trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, um, one of the ones he, he said, not in quarreling, not in quarreling, not in jealousy. And so when you look at these things, and here's another one of those checklists, because I, I need each one of you on your own, you need to check your walk. Does your walk have any of this in it? Carousing, my version says carousing, drunkenness, sexual impurity, promiscuity, um, quarreling, and jealousy. And I, I want you to talk about it on your own because some of this stuff, you don't want to admit it out loud, but guess what? God already knows. Amen. And um, somewhere, the, our friends at Alcoholics Anonymous tell us what? The first step to recovery is? Admitting. Admitting you have a problem. Admitting. Confess your faults that you might be healed. All right? Yep. And, and so the first person we need to confess to, before you confess it to me, you need to confess it to yourself. 
Yep. Yep. That's right. We, we've got to stop calling the things that we do. Uh, well, it's just a mistake. It's just a bad habit. Um, that's just who I am. That's just how I'm made. No, I got a three-letter word for what it is. Somebody know what it is? Sin. Sin. And we need to look at these things that we're doing that fall into these categories, and we need to say that is sin. Well, if I say I'm a sinner, then I'm a bad person. Okay, fine. If you don't say it, guess what? You're a bad person. You're a bad person. But guess, but guess what God has for you today? It's new every morning. Mercy. Mercy. He has new mercy. And so the reason why we can't receive the mercy of God is because we're holding on to our sin, pretending like we don't have a problem. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. No, you ain't good. You need God's mercy, but you will not receive the mercy until you confess that I'm walking in such a way does, that does not reflect the God that I claim to serve. I got a question, Pastor. Go ahead, go ahead, Rosa. Okay, can, I want to read 13 so I can get this word for you to help me with. Okay. And this one, it, it says, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness. What does that mean? So uh, the first one, in other versions, it's called sexual impurity. That, that, that's the freaks come out at night stuff. Oh, okay. okay. And then the other side, promiscuity is the sleeping around stuff. You know, it, it, it's the hitting, quit it, one night stand kind of lifestyle. Free and easy. Free and easy. You know, that's from the Navy guy. That's what the Navy guy said. So, um, so yeah, it, it, it's that lifestyle. But what kind of relationships are we having? All right. And so just like Renee said, uh, carousing, drunkenness, because even drunkenness, when you are drunk, what do we call it? You call it under the what? Influence. <laughs> Influence. <clears throat> Excuse me. And later on, Paul will say in Ephesians, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. With the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Because, because if we're going to give our up control of ourselves, it should not be to Bartles and James or Boone's Farm. Giving up control of ourselves to the Spirit of God. All right. And most people I know, they get drunk when? Nighttime. At, at night. At night. You know, we make fun of people who drink. Matter of fact, remember when uh, at the day of Pentecost, when they were speaking in tongues and they said, oh, these brothers are drunk. Anybody remember what Peter said? It's only nine o'clock in the morning. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. We ain't drunk, <laughs> which kind of is funny to me because it almost insinuates that if it was nine at night. <laughs> That, that's a, I'll talk to Peter about that when I get to heaven. Um, and, and, and so understanding how is your walk? How is your walk? And, and, and not how your walk is to me. Because people walk differently in front of the pastor. Yes, right. sir. So, so tell me, because we say, Jesus, God said, I will never leave you. Or forsake you. Or forsake, or forsake you. you. And Jesus is called Emmanuel. And Emmanuel means what? God I'll always with you. with you. So however I'll you walk, guess who's walking with you? God. God. So when you think you're hiding it from everybody else, nobody else sees what I'm doing, how I'm living, how I'm acting. Guess who does? God. God. And I joke all the time, people, I jump in people's cars, they want to try to change their radios real fast. And I'm like, well, if you were okay listening to it with God in the car, why are you okay, okay listening with me, with me in the car? I'm just wondering. All right. And so the challenge for each one of us, because again, we, everybody keeps telling me we need to get this church right. I need to get St. Mary AME church right. Well, you know what I need to get right before I get St. Mary AME Church right? I need to get my main church right. Because it doesn't matter how nice the windows are. It doesn't matter how cool the technology is. It doesn't matter how cool, comfortable the pews are, how great the acoustics are, how wonderful the instruments. It doesn't matter if this church is not right. Amen. And I'm not seeing in here where he says, hey, let us dress our churches up nicely 
so that people can enjoy them. He wasn't worried about the structure of the building. He was worried about the structure of the people who fill the building. And so I'll ask you the question again. If every church member walked like you, what kind of church would we have? Yeah, don't, don't answer that out loud. Actually, maybe you do want to, I don't know. I don't know, because maybe someone's like, we'd be a great church, Pastor. We'd be a perfect church. Anybody? anybody? Okay, good. Okay, good, because I didn't want anybody to get struck by lightning. And that would have been bad to see. All right? And, and, and so we need to evaluate ourselves. It was uh, Socrates. Socrates or Plato, one of them said, the unexamined life is not worth living. And I shared with you before, one of the things I appreciate about it, the African Methodist Episcopal Church is technically we have a new year that started on Monday. So we don't have to wait till January to make resolutions and to change our lives. We can start now. And I don't think it's a coincidence that tonight we started right here with how are, how are we walking? And so we walk in such a way, instead of walking and carousing and drunkenness and sexual impurity and promiscuity and quarreling and jealousy, but put on what? Verse 14. The Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I love the fact that it says Lord Jesus Christ. What does Lord mean? Ruler. Ruler. Because somebody tell me, how are we saved? What's the biblically? How are we saved? By Romans grace 10, through faith. By grace. By grace through faith. Okay. But in Romans chapter 10, we, we read this uh, uh, probably a couple <clears throat> months ago, as slow as Miss Jackie's making me go. <laughs> but if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. Right. One of the things many of us don't understand is we all want a savior, but nobody wants a Lord. Mm -hmm. Because a savior gets me out of stuff, right? When I, when I do dumb stuff, he will come and save me. He will rescue me. That's what I want. Because a Lord, if a Lord is a ruler, what does the Lord do? Say it again, Renee. He tells me what not to do and what to do. I don't want that. I'm grown. <laughs> I'm grown. I don't want nobody telling me what to do. Mm -hmm. I know none of you have ever said that. At least with your mouths. Hmm. But many of us have said that with our lives. Jesus has told us to do something, to, told us to live a certain way, and we said, that's okay. Because I've always wondered, um, people always say, well, God will understand. How come God's the only one that has to understand? When we live contrary to his word, when we violate his law, and we say, that's okay, God will understand. I'm not going to go to church today because I'm going to go do this over here. God will understand. I'm not going to tithe this week because I need to spend this money over here. God will understand. I'm not going to treat my wife right. That's okay. God will understand. How come God is the only one that's got to understand? Anyway. Because we believe in a warm and fuzzy God, not in the creator of the known universe. Ah, I like that. I like that. We got to build a bear God. We went to a store, we stuffed him with the stuff we wanted, we dressed him how we wanted to dress him, and we put him on our shelf. And when we needed to, we'd hug him, and he'd tell us everything was going to be okay. We'd squeeze his belly, and he'd say, I understand. I know your heart. It's okay. Yeah, that, 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 I, I like that, Renee. But that's not the God, that, that, that's not the God of, of this. Because if he is Lord, then we can't say no. But if we can say no, he's not Lord. And so when it talks about put on the Lord Jesus Christ, that means cover yourself in the rule and direction of God. As a matter of fact, Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom of God. 
the kingdom of God. And if it's his kingdom, that means he's in charge. So if I'm supposed to be seeking his rule first, that means before I do anything, I should do like David and say, God, should I go up? Because it's his rule. His way goes. His way is the highway. That is my way or the highway. No, his way is the highway. That's the higher way that we should take. So put on the Lord Jesus Christ and do not make plans. And, and Miss Jackie talked about this. Don't make plans to gratify the desires of the flesh. Now, again, I know you good holy people have never had this issue. But some of us, um, I'm going to go to church today. I'm going to go to Bible study. But then on Friday, because I know on Friday night, we'll, yeah. we're going to do some things. And so I need to put some stuff in the bank. In my, in my Holy Ghost bank, so that when I commit the sin, I'm going to come in on Friday, uh, I'll be all right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that might be a problem, because he says specifically, don't make plans to gratify the desires of your flesh. Renee, go ahead, and then we'll, we'll host it. I was going to say is that, you know, if we think about it, this goes all the way back to the garden, to that very first sin of not wanting to be told what to do and finding out that, hey, I can know what's right and wrong and I can make my own decisions and not have God tell me what to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go ahead, Will Halstead. In America, in the 21st century, uh, us Americans, uh, we have, we pride ourselves in our own free will. We pride ourselves in being independent. Mm -hmm. you, you're raised to be that way. Uh, to take care of yourself. Uh, biblically, you can't take care of yourself. Uh, uh, Christians, I, I have an expression I call cafeteria Christian, <clears throat> where you, you get people go to a buffet and they, they pick out this part, what they want, and they pick out this part, and this part, and this part, and the other, and that's their own free will, but the other part they don't pick out. Absolutely. And uh, it even goes back to slavery. Uh, the, you, you bring up to a black person about slavery, they, the hackles go up. Uh, the, uh, they're not independent anymore. They're not uh, free will anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, a way with other people too. No, no. And, and actually, I, I think one of the one of the greatest tricks of the devil was American slavery because the Bible is very clear that we are we are all slaves to whom? Slaves God. To Christ. Christ. We are slaves to Christ. But mm -hmm. many of us, just like Brother Halstead said, we don't even like the word. So we don't even use the word. So we change it to servant. So I, some versions, even it, it, it gets softer and softer. Well, guess what? Servants and, and even less than that, they have a choice. But what the Bible is trying to indicate, we don't have a choice. Well, we were slaves to sin. Now we are slaves to Christ. That means he is in charge. And, and perhaps us as pastors, we have failed you because we had thought, we made you all think that when you got saved, you were free to live however you wanted to live. And Jesus was just going to love you and hug you and squeeze you and tell you that he, you were his own. But there were expectations. He who comes, if you want to be my disciple, you must deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. It wasn't an or. It was an and. That was a command. Go ahead, Renee. I was going to say, I think you know, comparing like what we saw in America and what we know the Bible talks about in terms of Israel, slavery was much different than Yes. People screwed themselves into slavery. They made that decision. And more importantly, they knew there was a year, you know, I think what it was every seventh year or something like that, where they would be set free of those debts. And so I think we, we have to understand is that that word has different meanings and, and different connotations. And in and, and the American sense of slavery, what we saw over here is, People didn't sell themselves into slavery. They were forced into it. Absolutely. So I don't think it's a good thing to compare the biblical term slavery and what we 
saw happening in, in the South here in America and in many other places in the world too. Absolutely, and, and, and I, you know, I agree. I, and I think part of the problem is most of us will not do any study past the word itself. And, and that's part of the issue because we, I actually have a, I actually have a sermon and the title of it is, and I haven't preached it yet because I've been scared to preach it for, I, I think I wrote it in maybe the early 2000s. And the title of the sermon is The Case for a Slave Mentality. And I know if I say that to some people, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, how dare you? And I said, but you got to understand, biblically, what I'm talking about. Because too often we want to take, as Renee has, has correctly pointed, we want to take that American sense and that American history. But the bottom line is, we are servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is in charge. And so our lifestyle should reflect that. And so when we make plans to gratify the flesh, here's your question. Is Jesus making plans for you to gratify your flesh? No. 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 So if he's not making plans, but you are making plans, we have an issue. And so we've got to get rid of our plans. I think uh, I've told you several times before, I've got a number of post-it notes around my desk that you know just to remind me of God's word and everything that's going on and one of the things that I've got on there it says if you want what God has planned for you you have to give up what you have planned for yourself because I, I think I remember his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and so if I want what I want I, I can probably have that, but I can't get what I want and have what he wants unless I make sure what I want is what he wants for me. Okay. All right. Any questions about uh, uh, Romans chapter 13? Questions, comments? All right. Good. Hey, Trinity. Yes, sir. Can you read for me Romans 14? One through 12. Yes, sir. Except, except the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything, <laughs> but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master, servants stand or fall. And they, and they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord, for they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us, li for none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. All right. Okay, Bible scholars, what'd you hear? That there's people that are that use their their doctrine of their church to back up their faith. Okay, uh, they don't. They're not really Christians. They're followers of a specific uh, faith, and uh, they're weak in faith. Okay, but when you get a chance with them, don't dispute over stuff that doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, just stick to the gospel. Christ crucified and uh, 
condition. Okay. All right. Renee? Uh, I was saying one thing I saw was that we need to be aware of is, is that like when it says, you know, uh, except one whose faith is weak, is that we need to realize everybody's at a different level in their faith journey with God. And we can't always expect everybody to be where we are. And we can't expect to be every place they are. So like you often say, don't look beside you. Don't look behind you. Keep your eye forward and keep it on Jesus Christ. I said that? All right. Way to go me. All right. I say, else, what, else did you, what, what else did you see in, the, in these verses? Work out your own salvation. In other words, clean up your own backyard. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Anybody else? And not to judge others. Mm. And we're, we're gonna spend we're gonna spend some time talking about that one. That that one. Uh, yes. 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 Okay. All right. Anybody else? Go ahead, Will Cooper. Look in the mirror and examine thyself. Okay. And we've been talking about that a lot today, right? Self examination. Self examination. Uh, matter of fact, James, uh, uh, the brother of Jesus, will say, "Hey, the, the word of God is a mirror." And, and to look into a mirror and see a smudge on your face and just to walk away, that, that's foolish. You need to make the change when you see what's going on in there. Um, Rosa, hold on a second. Okay, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand um, because my, a, lot of the, a lot of what she read I read the whole thing with her, but I read a different version, and I get so mixed up with this different version. So mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or if I'm, I don't know. But what I got out of what she was reading about us not being able to, well, us being able to look at other people without judging them just because they don't have what we have. Okay, and and, and it even goes a little bit further than what have they have what we have but they don't do what we do. So this is quite frankly, one of my favorite chapters in all of the Bible because of Romans 14, uh, one. Because in some of your version, it says, except the one who is weak and don't argue over disputable matters. I love the fact that that's in the Bible because it's God 2000 years ago saying, you know what? Some of you are gonna have a different opinion. Should you sing hymns or should you sing gospel songs? Should you have communion on first Sunday or on every Sunday? Should you wear a suit and tie or should you just come as you are? Should the carpet be red? Should the carpet be blue? Should you have a building or a tent? All of that stuff we've been arguing about and breaking up churches for years. And this chapter tells me, why are you fighting about this? One author said, you know, too often we major in the minors and we minor in the majors. Mm -hmm. We spend all of this time arguing about whether or not a woman should have long hair and wear makeup. But we don't seem to care if people talk about whether or not Jesus was, is the son of God. Amen. And I think what Brother Hall said really said is our focus is if we agree that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. If you worship on Saturday and I worship on Sunday, guess what? We good. I don't need to give you 427 reasons why you're supposed to worship on Sunday. I know the disciples worship, the, they chose to worship on Sunday. But nowhere does it say, and, and here, here, actually, what, what is the standard for our lives? Everyday worship, relationship with Him. Okay, relationship with God. That that that, that, that sounds good. That, that sounds good. But but we actually have a a standard a, a, a somewhere where we can look as to a worship standard. Him every day. Uh, Read the Bible every day. The standard of our lives is this book. This is what we use to determine whether or not things are right or wrong. Your opinion is not the standard. 
The opinion of the denomination is not the standard because when the denomination disagrees with this, who's right? The book, the Bible. The Bible says, the Bible. let God be true and every man a liar. So this is our standard. So does anybody know that, is there a verse that says, thou shalt worship on Sundays only? No. Anybody? Anybody? No. So if it's if, if not a verse that says that, guess what? We are free to worship. Matter of fact, how many days a week should we worship anyway? Every day. Every day. Every day. Okay, thank you. Because that's, that's why I don't understand why we get mad because we come to a building once on a particular day a week. Because I should be worshiping every day. every day. Every day. Now, the fact that I come and meet on a Saturday, a Friday, a Wednesday, I, I, I don't have I don't I don't have that. How about thou shalt celebrate communion every Sunday? We got that? Yeah, don't say that. Just do it often. Do it as often as you do it. As often as you shall do it. Do it, do it. Do it remembrance of me. That makes it, if it's something that's not in this book, it is a disputable matter. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Is that a disputable matter? No. Yeah. No, it's not. Because it's in the book. The book is the standard. Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. Is that a disputable matter? No, because no, why? It's in, not because it's the opinion of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. It is because it's in, it's in the book. And so as we talk about all the things we talk about, all the, should you worship? I mean, I've heard churches break up over whether or not they should worship at 10 or 11. Really? Church is breaking up over whether or not they should have wine or grape juice or water or real bread or wafers. Happens all the time, Rosa. Contemporary service or, you know, oh my gosh, you have music. You have instruments. They didn't have instruments in the New Testament. You know what else they didn't have in the New Testament? Electricity. Mm -hmm. They didn't, yes, yes, Victoria, they didn't have electricity, but I have yet to hear anybody say, oh my gosh, our church shouldn't use electricity because they didn't have that in the New Testament. Stop the foolishness. Okay. Say again, Renee. Okay, one more time, because you're breaking up. <laughs> Amish, the Amish don't believe in electricity. Yeah, they don't believe in electricity. I, I'm sorry, I'm kind of a fan. I'm, I'm kind of a fan. And, and so, but see, but again, here's, here's the, here's, and here's why I'm, I'm harping on this right now, is because we have broken up relationships with people in the church down the street because they do something different. Not because it's not in here, it's because our doctrine and discipline says you got to kneel seven times and do this, but they only kneel three times. And that is a disputable matter because ultimately we are doing what we do for whom? God. God. Because we just got done saying it. We are his servants. Wait, 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 where was it? Where was it? Oh, let's see. It, it, oh, yeah. Verse seven, seven, eight, nine. Uh, for none of us live for himself and no one dies for himself. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we belong to the African Methodist Episcopal Church. <laughs> oh, no? No, sir. Oh, we belong to our families. No, sir. We belong to our racial group. No, no sir. Well, that, that, that's got to be what it is because that's, that's what some of us live like. That's true. But the book says we belong to whom? God. Right. We belong to God. And so if I decide I don't, you know, here, here's, here's a fact. I don't drink. I've never drank. And it's not, and really it's not even a religious thing. I just don't want to drink. 
Now, people tell me, you know you're free to drink. Yeah, I know I'm free to drink. I just don't want to. Why does it bother you? Because I don't want to. The same thing. Somebody doesn't eat meat. Why does it bother you that they don't eat meat? They free. Right. They should eat meat. They don't want to eat meat. <laughs> Why are we putting that on them? Yes, you're right. The Bible does say, hey, we are free to eat all the bacon we want to eat. Praise God. Thank you. But just because someone says, you know what, I don't want to eat that, does not make them wrong. It makes them different. <laughs> and if they are doing that in respect and worship and service of God, who am I to say to them, you shouldn't do that? All right. If they believe that to them, if they believe that something is a sin. And, and later on, we will read. It is a Anything not done of faith is, is sin. So if I don't believe I should be doing it, but I'm doing it anyway, even though there's nothing technically wrong with it biblically, because I'm not doing it, I don't believe I should be doing it, that is sin. So for that person, I got a good friend of mine. I love him to death. He, he's a member of the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ does not believe in musical instruments. They have no, we joke all the time about our musician at the church. He's like, musician? You know, they, 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 they don't believe in music. For him to come and for us to say, hey, come on, let's have some music. For him to participate in that, knowing that everything in him says that's not right. I don't want to do that. It's sin. It's fine for us because we believe I, hey, the music works. Praise the Lord with a timbrel and dance. Oh, wait, the Baptists don't dance. Y'all should dance. No, don't dance. If you don't feel like you should dance, don't dance. The reason it is sin is not because we think it's sin. It's because we think God thinks it's sin. And, we were, and we're going against God if we do it. And so then it becomes, it's not a matter of faith. No, because what we do, and here, here's the challenge, really, because all of this, it says, uh, actually, here, here's a question. For, actually, Renee, go ahead, and then I'm going to ask a question. Go ahead, Renee. I was going to say, you know, it's one thing uh, uh, Brother Halstead was saying, and, and you was, that that's why one of the reasons, like with my son, I taught him the importance of <laughs> giving thanks when you receive food. Because you want to bless it and give it to the Lord. You know, you want to thank him for that blessing so that, you know, you're always recognizing him in everything. And therefore, you know, you, you're safe to eat anything that's put in front of you. Absolutely. And that, so here's my question, because you, you tied in with it, Renee. Again, self-reflection. Who are you living for? No, 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 no. Self-reflection. And I know because we're in Bible study, so I know what the right the right answer is. But yesterday there wasn't a Bible study. <laughs> Who are you living for? I'm living for my wife. I'm living for my husband. I'm living for my grandkids. I'm living for these people over here. I'm living for my Facebook followers. I'm living. Hey, I'm living for myself. But that's a problem biblically. Because the book says we are supposed to live for who? Christ. Christ. And here's the beautiful thing, Mr. Washington. It doesn't say we're supposed to die for him because he died for us. Our lives were supposed to be for him. So that's <laughs> why worship is not a Sunday thing. It's not a Saturday thing. It's an everyday thing. Because if you were alive, let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And that's not just in okay, that's not just in what I say, because somebody told me that actions speak louder, speak louder, than, speak louder than, words. than words. Do your actions praise God? Because guess what? Without breath, I can't do all of this. Man. Try to hold your breath and do all this. You can't. You need breath, not just to talk. You need breath to move. And so that means our lifestyle should be one of praising God, of living for him. Now, this is not to say, please, this is not to say we're supposed to be in church 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We are supposed to be in worship. Amen. 
What's the difference between being in church and being in worship? You know, the Lord in the building. Okay. The Lord in the building. Mara, you were saying something? You're not always in church when you worship God. That's true. All right. So, so come on. Come on. What, what, what's the difference between being in church and being in worship? It's a, it's a corporate worship. Okay. In church, it's typically corporate. I can go with that a little bit. Okay. Anybody else? You don't need to be in church to worship. You worship anytime, any place, anywhere. Absolutely. The worship is the lifestyle. That, thank you. That, that's really the word yeah. I, I wanted in lifestyle. Because worship means worship. Is he worth it? Is he worth how I go work? Because some of us don't realize work is not a curse. Work was not the curse. Sweat in work, hard work was the curse. God, Adam had a job before the curse. So our work is worship. The way we manage our money is worship. worship. The way we parent is worship. worship. The way we work in our marriage is worship. worship. The way we live our everyday life is worship because it should be guided and directed by God. And the question is, is he worth it? Is he worth my life? Is he worth the way I'm, well, I really want to go buy this and do that, but that's not how God says I should manage my money. I really want to step out on my wife because this girl over here is fine. That's worship. Is he worth me denying myself? If anyone wants to be my disciple, they must deny themselves because I'm denying myself because he is worth it. And so the challenge for us as we look at this, and yeah, we come together, and, and please also remember worship is not just songs we sing. Everybody says, okay, now we're going to worship. And that, that just means we're going to stand up and sing some songs and clap real loud. And that's worship. If that's the only worship we do, God, much. Because guess what? I did that same thing at the Prince Con. I stood up and clapped and sang songs too. And paid a lot more money. And, and, and so worship for God has to be more than that. Uh, we'll all stand in the and then Rosa. Our worship is putting something forward of yourself. Uh, something that when I gamble, I worship money. I worship the piles of chips in front of me on the table. I worship the power those uh, chips gave me over other people. Uh, I put those in front of God. You have to, when one of the things of worship is to put him in front of everything else in creation. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things, there's a different aspect of worship, but you have to put him in front. Yes. Seek ye first. Yes. If, if Wayne Hall was online, he would tell us that one thing God can't do is be second. Absolutely. Because we, he wants to be first. Okay, thou shalt have no other gods before me. He must be the priority. And so that's why I get back to it. What is the priority of our life? Who is the priority of our lives? Renee, you were going to say something? Uh, it was more or less addressed. Thank you. Okay. All right. Rosa? I wanted to ask why is it, um, it's a lot of people right now that's just mad about what's going on in the world, the war in Israel, number one. Why do so many people think that God just loves Israel? And, and, and well, I had a conversation with a, with a guy earlier today and he said, well, you know, God is mad because they're bombing Israel. I feel like he's mad because of the way the world is going, not just Israel. Is it just Israel that he's loving on so hard? I'm feeling like he's loving on us as being people. 
his 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 children, not just Israel. Why do why is that? I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm confused. Well, bottom line is um, God has a plan for Israel. This whole process started with Israel. Mm -hmm. Right. And last I checked, Jesus was from Israel. Israel. So so there right. is a plan. And, and the Bible is very specific that, you know, when he talks about talks to Abraham, the blessing of Abraham was I will bless those that bless you and I will curse those curse those who curse you. And so God has a special plan for the nation of Israel. But also, yes, God, God has got, trust me, every time somebody says to you, well, why did this hurricane happen? And why did Hurricane Katrina happen? And somebody says, oh, well, it happened because of the sin in, in New Orleans. Well, if that's the case, then we should probably have hurricanes in every other city in America. Right. So here's the answer. If there were 10 million people affected by Hurricane Katrina, guess what? God had 10 million reasons why Katrina hit. When we try to limit God to one answer, we are limiting an infinite God because we can only handle one thing at a time. Right. And, and so to say that God only cares about one thing, uh, he's bigger than that. All right. Yes. And, and somewhere I heard that, again, his ways are not our ways. His, 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 his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And so who has understood the mind of the Lord? So exactly, look, my problem, I'm not worried about whether he's mad about Israel. I'm worried about if he's mad what I did last night. Amen. And I got to be honest with you. I got to or, yeah, or what I did this morning. Yeah, I, 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 that's where I need to be. I need to be really focused at. Right. I'll pray for Israel. I'll pray for y'all. But I, promise. I, I need to make sure that I am in line with God. And, and again, one of my frustrations is every time, like right now, every, you know, there'll be preachers all over TV trying to explain to us exactly what's going on and why it's going on. And right. if we can explain that, then <laughs> we're a lot smarter than I really yeah. think we are. All right. God's moving. What I do know is God is moving. What I do know is God has a plan. Do I know what that plan is exactly? No, but guess what? I trust him. And, and I believe that's where we should stay. Okay? Hey. All right. Um, it is seven. Oh, go ahead, Renee. The sovereign military order of Malta Roads in Jerusalem has two hospitals in that area, one in Gaza and one in Israel. And they both talk to each other all the time. They're, it's a Christian organization. It dates back hundreds and hundreds of years. And, and like when people ask them that question, like they were saying today on their radio, it's a mystery of God. We don't always understand like you were saying. And, and God knows we don't, we just have to pray and keep our faith and hope in him. And, and, and that, that answer is not satisfying to a lot of people because we have to know, we feel we have to know all of the answers. But the bottom line is, um, just like advanced calculus, if I explained it to you, how many of you would understand it anyway? Oh, uh, Renee, not you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Renee would understand it. The rest of you, even though I explained it to you, you'd all be looking at me like. Yeah. And in that oh. same case, if the infinite God was going to explain to you everything that he was doing. We would sit there going, okay, you lost me at in the beginning. <laughs> Everything after that I didn't get. And, and so, yeah, we, we, we want to, but the bottom line is when we don't, we have to throw ourselves on the grace and mercy of God and trust his justice. Okay? All right. Uh, we're going to come back to Romans 14, uh, but uh, your homework assignment, I need you all to do a self-exam. One, I need you to answer the question, how am I walking? How am I walking? Not how is my husband walking? Not how are my kids walking? Not how is the pastor walking? I need you to ask, how am I walking? And do I need to change something about my walk? All right. Two, who am I living for? 
Who, who am I living for? And, and I need you to be honest. Because guess what? God already knows the answer. And, and so this is not, again, this is not just, well, you know, because um, how many hours of day does God want you to live for him? 24. Every hour. Every hour. You know, we sing the song, I need thee every hour. And God's like, well, I want you every hour. I remember when I first got in the military, I was like, hey, I work eight to five. And they were like, uh, no, you, you are on duty 24 hours a day. We let you go home at five, but we were real clear. We want you back at 530. You coming back. So can I really give that kind of service to the United States Air Force, but not give that kind of service to God? Probably not. And so I want to challenge us. I want to challenge us because, because I want us to go further and deeper in our relationship with God. And it starts by evaluating. We can't go there until we know where we're at. Amen. And that takes for some honesty with ourselves. Let's get in the mirror and look and go, hey, who are you living for? And if it's not God, if, if we're not living for him, if we're not reflecting him, then we confess it. God, I'm not living for you. I'm picking and choosing. As Brother Halstead said, I'm in the cafeteria and I, I, I pick Wednesday night, I pick Sunday morning, I pick Thursday afternoon. God, I want, I want to do better. And I do believe that is a prayer he will answer if we will pray it and if we will meet it. Okay? Amen. All right. Anybody else? Questions, comments? I was going to say, it, this is really what veterans would know about this. Uh, when you're in the service, it's very easy to count out to the colonel or the captain because that's what you're supposed to do. It just that comes naturally. That that's over you, and you're going to do what he says. Come fire, hell or high water. But with God, is was way over all the colonels in the world. I, I wouldn't even do something in the service that I knew the colonel was going to damn me for. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't do that. But with God, maybe I would. You know, mm -hmm. that's. Absolutely, because again, I think as Brother Renee said, we have painted God as a warm, fuzzy, cuddly God, yeah. and we can go ahead and do what we want to do, and he'll be okay with it. But not the colonel. But not the colonel, or not the chief master sergeant, in my case, that lived in my house. All right. Um, all right. Anybody else? Questions, comments? All right, we will return to uh, Romans 14 next week and work on a couple other things in there. Um, I want to thank you very much for your presence, your time. It is so good to see all of you in Bible study this evening. Let's pray. Eternal God, help us. Yes. Even as Israel and all that's going on there, even what all that's going on in the world, God, it's me. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Lord, I'm standing in the need of your forgiveness because I am not and I am not walking right. God, I believe I'm not alone. And so, Lord, we ask that you not excuse our poor walking, but you give us the strength, the courage, the will, the desire to walk decently, to walk properly, to walk honestly. Lord God, I ask that indeed we will walk as if you are Lord, that we would live for you, that every day would be a day of worship in how we parent, in how we work on our jobs, in how we live with our spouses. God, be first. Lord, help us to treat you as the Lord that you are. We, we confess we have not done that. But tonight, God, we want to be better. Yes. And we ask that you will use tonight as a launching point into everything you have for us because we are lining ourselves up with you and your word. Help us to be people of the word so that we can make a difference in the world. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Mm -hmm.
God bless you all. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. Good night, everybody. Good it's night. A good teaching, uh, Pastor. I'm going to call you. <laughs> you say what now? Say that, I'm going to call again. you. Answer your phone. I, uh, I will answer it. I saw where you called me the last time. Okay. I, I, I know. <laughs> well, I just saw it when you said something. Yes, ma'am. I will answer my phone. Thank you. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations, new pastor. Thank you. I'm trying to get used to this new, these new surroundings and all these new people. I got I to gotta meet them. The old pastor told me about some of these people. I got to keep my eye on them. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good evening. You too. Everybody. Bye bye. Hello. Hey Bob, how you doing? <laughs> and I found the pictures. We need to talk about that. Okay. I was shocked. I had to look at them hard to see who it was. And I said, "Oh, that's the first one." Are we still I'm recording? Oh, yeah, we are. Hold on. Thank you for the reminder, ma'am. <laughs>